I don't know about you guys, but when I was a kid, I didn't much enjoy going on moorland walks. I much preferred going to the forest. Moorlands had a habit of being a bit cold and wet and damp, to be honest with you. And of course, there were no sticks to play with. But when I started working on moorlands, or peat bogs, to be more specific, I discovered a hidden beauty, a place where I could be alone and at peace. I think the thing that surprised me most when I started studying peatlands was just how interconnected we all are with the habitat that most people never actually visit. The water we drink, the air we breathe, we literally depend for our lives on peat bogs. I don't know if you know, but 70% of the drinking water in this country comes from uplands, mainly surface waters, uh, most of which have been derived from peat. The biggest store of carbon in this country is not in our trees, as many of us think. It's actually locked up under our feet in peat bogs. There's almost as much carbon stored in our peat bogs as there is in all the forests of the UK and France and Germany combined. So, some peat. Here's a bag of peat compost, which didn't travel particularly well, but uh, here we have it. This bag of peat came from a bog that looks something like this. And a bag this size would have taken 100 years to form as carbon dioxide was taken from the atmosphere and incorporated into leaves and stems and roots and then laid down as peat. When you put this on your garden, most of that carbon ends up going back up into the atmosphere as carbon dioxide, where it can contribute towards climate change. So a bag this size, over the 100 years that it took to form, uh, has carbon equivalent to driving an average VW Golf with a petrol engine from Birmingham to London, and back twice. Every month, gardeners in the UK consume enough peat to fill not just one Olympic swimming pool, but 69 Olympic swimming pools worth of peat every month. We're now using peat at a rate which is around 200 times faster than it can form naturally. And that's a problem because the habitats from which we are extracting that peat, in the UK principally lowland raised bogs, are now under threat because of our behaviour. There is about 6,000 hectares of that habitat in good condition. And for that reason, the government wants to try and phase out the use of peat by amateur gardeners by 2020. We can help because we can all make a decision the next time we're in a garden centre to look for peat-free compost. A couple of years ago, Scottish Natural Heritage did a survey where they asked people to say, what are the places you would most and least likely visit in Scotland. The place that people said they would be most likely to visit was mountains, second only to oceans. And the second least likely place that people said they would visit in Scotland was peat bogs, second only to derelict land. Despite the fact, if you think about it, that to get to the top of any mountain in Scotland, you have to walk over a peat bog. So I think that very often, like these people, we're so busy looking at the top of the mountain that we're trying to climb that we miss the beauty of all the things around us on the journey to get there. I know I've been guilty of that. So I'd like to end by asking you to look again at the peat bogs and at the mountains you are climbing.